Hey everyone, so glad you're joining us for another deep dive. You know, it's so cool that you're all using Pronunciator to level up your Mandarin. It really is a fantastic tool. But sometimes you need a little extra, like, uh, I don't know, a spark to really get those tricky concepts. Absolutely, like a little boost to take you from textbook to like actually using the language. Totally. Yeah. So today we're tackling something that trips up a lot of Mandarin learners, negation. You know, how to say no or not in a way that actually makes sense. Right, because it's not as straightforward as you might think, especially coming from English. Exactly. We're talking about those little words, jopu, jopu, and ka, mag, that can make all the difference. And once you master them, you unlock a whole new level of expression in Mandarin. It's like suddenly you can actually have opinions and disagree. Huh. Yeah, no more just nodding along like you understand everything. Okay. But seriously, let's start with bu. Because you've probably seen it in a T-O-N in pronunciator, right? Oh, yeah, for sure. It's like the workhorse of negation, especially for present tense stuff. Like, I don't eat meat, that kind of thing. You're telling the world, this is me, this is what I do or don't do. And the cool thing is, it's not limited to just the present. You can use akbu for future actions, too. Like, I won't go tomorrow. Oh, that's right. So it's not just about what's happening in NW, but also about your intentions. Like, nope, not doing that later either. Exactly. And you know what else is neat? You can use akbu to talk about your personality, your likes and dislikes. Like, I don't like coffee. Oh, I like that. Yeah. So it's really about expressing your your Mandarin self, not just stating facts. Totally. It's like with jupe, you're building your Mandarin personality brick by brick. That's a great way to put it. And speaking of personality, one of our sources had this example. My sister doesn't watch TV. It's a perfect example of how FUBU <laughs> works with Abbott's. Yeah. It's not just about a single instance. It's about a general truth. Like, this is my sister. This is what she's like. It paints a picture, you know, and it shows how efficient Mandarin can be. Just one little word does so much work. Right. And that's something that English speakers sometimes struggle with. We're used to having lots of different words for different situations. But in Mandarin, it's often about keeping things simple. I guess that's why it's so important to really understand the core concept of boo. It's like uh -huh. the foundation for so much of your negation. Exactly. It's like once you get boo, a whole bunch of other stuff starts to click into place. That's right. Okay, ready to move on to the fun stuff? Oh, yeah. Bring on the challenge. All right. Now we're getting to May. This one tends to trip people up. Probably because English is all over the place when it comes to talking about things that didn't happen. Right. Like we have didn't, haven't, all these variations. But may is like a universal eraser for the past. If something didn't happen, you use a may and may, period. A universal eraser. I love that. It makes it so much easier to visualize. Like you're going back in time and just wiping out that action. So no matter how you'd say it in English, may covers it in Mandarin. Exactly. Like, imagine you want to say, I didn't eat breakfast. In Mandarin, it's just, Yeho, fa me chi so fan. Boom. Done. So simple, yet so powerful. And it really highlights how Meichi anchors you to a specific moment in the past. It's not about a habit. It's about a single event that did not occur. Right. You're pinpointing that moment in time and saying, nope, this did not happen then. Okay, so as pronunciator users, we're already thinking about different tenses, right? Definitely. That structured approach is so helpful for language learning. But now we're adding another layer, the concept of non-occurrence in the past. And that's where may comes in. Yeah, it's like taking those pronunciator drills to the next level. You're not just learning the words, you're learning how to use them to express really specific ideas. And that's what fluency is all about, right? Not just knowing words, but being able to actually use them in a nuanced way. Totally. And that's where things get even more interesting because may, when you combine it with the verb to have, it creates this whole other layer of meaning. Ooh, tell me more about that. This is where my pronunciator brain gets excited. Okay, so you know how in English we say haven't done and don't have as separate things? Well, in Mandarin, may see plus to have can mean both. Wait, really? That's so cool. It's like Mandarin is like super efficient with its words. Right. And it makes sense when you think about it. Both haven't done and don't have express the absence of something, whether it's an action or a thing. That's mind blowing. It's like Mandarin is challenging us to think differently about how we express these concepts. It is. And once you grasp that core idea, it actually becomes quite elegant, don't you think? Totally. It's like a puzzle piece clicking into place. So to bring this back to real life, our source had this example. I don't have money. Ah, classic. And see, it works perfectly in both senses. You haven't acquired money, 
and you don't currently possess it. All packed into that one phrase. So, so far we've got boo for present, future, and personality. Yeah. And may for past actions that didn't happen and also for don't have. You got it. You're well on your way to mastering Mandarin negation. But hold on tight because there's one more tricky thing we need to talk about. Oh, what is it? Well, sometimes our brains try to take shortcuts. And with may, that can lead to some, shall we say, interesting mistakes. Okay, I'm intrigued. Give it to me straight. All right, here's the deal. You can't use may to talk about your general dislikes. Like, you can't say, I haven't liked coffee, to mean, I just don't like coffee. Oh, right. I can see how that would be tempting, though, like trying to force may to do too much. Exactly. It's all about understanding the limits of these words, and that's where a pronunciator's structured approach can be really helpful. Right, because it forces you to pay attention to those little details. And those details, well, they make all the difference when it comes to actually using the language correctly. Couldn't agree more. So I guess the key takeaway here is to really be mindful of when you're using me. <laughs> Precisely. Think about the time element. Think about the specific action or state you're negating, and you'll be well on your way to mastering this tricky but essential part of Mandarin. Sounds good to me. <laughs> all right. I think we need a little break to process all of this negation to goodness. But don't go anywhere. We'll be right back to dive even deeper into the wonderful world of boo and may. Okay, so you're saying it's all about being precise. Yeah, like Mandarin wants you to be super clear about what you're negating. Are we talking about a specific thing that didn't happen or just like a general feeling? Makes sense. And to make sure we really get this, our source had this example of a classic learner mistake. Oh, I love these. They're always so insightful. So imagine you want to say, I don't like you. Ouch. <laughs> right? But you can't use may for that. Nope. That's where people trip up. Because in English, we might say, I haven't liked you. But in Mandarin, it's different. Right, because in Mandarin, may is really about something specific that didn't happen in the past, not a general feeling or a state of being. Mm, exactly. And that's where your pronunciator knowledge comes in handy, because you're already thinking about grammar, about sentence structure. It's like pronunciator lays the groundwork. Provides the foundation, yeah. And then we come along and add... Look, the fancy trim. Yeah, I like that analogy. We're adding the nuance, the extra layer of understanding. So thinking back to our example, I don't like you. That's about a feeling in the present, right? Yeah, yes. It's a general statement. It's not tied to a specific moment in the past. So we'd use gala because yeah. that's our go-to for like present tense stuff, habits, opinions. You got, you're really getting the hang of this. It's starting to click, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm curious. How does all of this like change how we think about English? Oh, that's a great question. Because when you learn another language, it makes you look at your own language in a new way. Right? Right. Totally. Like suddenly yeah. you're noticing things you never even thought about before. Exactly. And with negation, it's really interesting because Mandarin makes you separate out things that English lumps together. Mm. What do you mean? Well, think about it. In English, we use don't for both present and future, right? Like, I don't eat meat, or I won't go tomorrow. Yeah, true. We don't really distinguish between them. Right, but Mandarin forces you to make a choice. Is this something that's true and now WA, or something that will be true in the future? You have to be more specific. Oh, that's so cool. It's like Mandarin is giving you this, like, finer-grained control over time. I know, it's fascinating. And then with Mayo, it's all about erasing those specific events from the past, which... English can be kind of vague about sometimes. Right, like English might use didn't, haven't, or even just a simple no. Yeah. But may is always there for those specific moments of non-occurrence. Precisely. So you see, by learning Mandarin, you're not just expanding your vocabulary, you're actually expanding your understanding of how language works. That's mind-blowing. It's like yeah. Mandarin is a key that unlocks all these hidden doors in your brain. I love that. And who knows, maybe it'll even make you a better English speaker too. Huh? I'll take it. Okay, so for our listeners who are using pronunciator to like conquer Mandarin, what's the key takeaway here? How can they really make gu and mei a natural part of their Mandarin? It all comes back to that time element. Whenever you're building a negative sentence, ask yourself, am I talking about something happening now, something in the future, or something specific that did not happen in the past? So habit, preference, present, future, that's boo territory. You got it. And if we're talking about something that didn't happen in the past or something that just doesn't exist, then 
May is our eraser. Exactly. And remember that handy combo of plus to have that can cover both haven't done and don't have. It's like a two for one deal. It's like Mandarin is giving us all these little language hacks. It is. And you know, even though these distinctions might seem small, they make a huge difference in how natural and fluent you sound. I bet. It's all about the details, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And as you keep practicing with pronunciator, those details will start to become second nature. You'll start using correctly without even thinking about it. That's the dream, right? To just effortlessly speak Mandarin like a native. Exactly. And Pronunciator gives you all the tools you need to achieve that dream. It's all about putting in the effort, paying attention, and most importantly, having fun with it. Love that. Because learning a language should be enjoyable, not a chore. Preach. So to all our listeners out there, keep practicing, keep exploring, and keep those questions coming. It's like Pronunciator gives you the map, and we're here to point out all the cool little side roads and hidden gems along the way. I like that. And the more you explore, the more you realize how much there is to discover in Mandarin. Seriously. It's like every time you think you've got a handle on something, there's a whole other layer waiting to be uncovered. <laughs> it's what keeps language learning so exciting, right? There's always something new to learn. Exactly. And it's not just about learning new words. It's about learning new ways of thinking, new ways of expressing yourself. That's so true. And I think that's what's been so cool about this deep dive into negation. It's made us think about how Mandarin and English approach these ideas in totally different ways. Yeah. Like it's not just about translating word for word. It's about understanding the underlying logic of the language. Absolutely. And once you start to see those connections, those patterns, it's like a whole new world opens up. I totally agree. So as we wrap up our exploration, of Bu and uh, me, I have a little challenge for our listeners. A challenge. I love it. Okay, so as you're going through your pronunciator lessons, or even just listening to native Mandarin speakers, pay close attention to how they use these two little words. Listen for those subtle cues, the situations where they choose Bu, 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 mm. or me. It's yeah. like a little detective game. Exactly. And don't be afraid to like test out your understanding. Try using both Bu and Bu in different contexts and see what happens. Oh, and Pronunciator's chatbot is perfect for that. You can practice in a safe environment and get instant feedback. That's such a good point. The chatbot is like your personal Mandarin coach, always there to help you level up. Exactly. And remember, every mistake is a learning opportunity. So don't get discouraged if you mess up. Just keep practicing and keep having fun with it. Couldn't have said it better myself. It's all about the journey. Absolutely. It's about embracing the challenge, the ups and downs, and most importantly, the joy of learning a new language. So to all our Mandarin learners out there, keep diving deep, keep exploring, and keep those questions coming. We'll be here to guide you every step of the way. Until next time. See you then.